。好，请颁奖嘉宾与获奖运动员合影留念。好的，谢谢，谢谢颁奖嘉宾，请颁奖嘉宾稍事休息。接下来颁发到的是东吴人寿绿色领旗衫，获得二零一六第七届环太湖国际公路自行车赛亚军乐地产南通至海门赛段绿色领旗衫的运动员是，来自诺菲克洋行中国车队的吴博宏。有请海门市体育局局长袁峰先生再次为吴伯宏颁发绿色领旗衫这一幕一定会铭记于历史啊！发生的几率比得冠军的几率还小。再次祝贺吴国红，再次祝贺你。好的，朋友们，接下来有请海门市人民政府副市长王拥军先生为上海西部集团总经理钱运先生颁奖。好的，再次感谢颁奖嘉宾，请颁奖嘉宾稍事休息。好的，朋友们，二零一六第七届环太湖国际公路自行车赛第五赛段南通至海门站的业余组的颁奖仪式就到这里。那么待会儿呢，将会是职业组的颁奖仪式，届时请大家继续来关注，谢谢大家。是这座城市最优美的诗篇。这里人文底蕴丰厚，充溢着生态和谐之美。北宋王安石，清末状元，著名教育家、实业家张謇，金石书画家王各仪，新月派诗人卞之琳，都在史册上写下了《海门》篇章。婉约的海门山歌与雄浑的通东号子在这里互为唱和，独特的文化脉络孕育了海纳百川、强毅力行的海门精神。白鹭翻飞，渔歌唱晚，世界奇观一雅山，让国家生态文明建设示范区实至名归。近年以来，一代又一代海门人步入蓝。将一千一百四十九平方公里的通缉平原建成了誉满全国的科技之乡、教育之乡、纺织之乡。
二零一五年，中国实力位居全国信誉经济基本竞争力排前线第二十二位，江苏第八位。高水平小康测评综合得分九十七点九，位列苏中苏北县市第一。一座江苏沿海开发的先行城市，上海、长江以北备考优越的卫星城市，长三角加速崛起的明星城市，矗立在长江之畔、黄海之滨。是这座城市最独特的名府。海门，地处长江经济带，长三角地铁化，江苏沿海开发，上海自贸区建设等重大战略交互点上，与上海的直线距离只有六十公里。苏州大桥、重启大桥和筹划建设中的沪通城际轻轨、重海大桥等多条越江通道环绕左右。海门成为长三角北域，连同上海、苏南等环护接近城市。嗯
The only time would be set by Peter Cruz. Wong Mei Ying not far away. Chow with a good performance too. But none of them would be able to lead with the main man on the day. Alexander Kolovash of the Mink Cycling Team. 
he take the first orange leader's jersey at this year's tour. So from the Wuxi Prologue onto the Wuxi Circuit, and that will be the first road stage of the week. A short one, one for the sprinters, again, and a very warm, sunny skies. It was so fast that the early break wasn't allowed to stay away. Intermediate sprints mopped up by Vilia Triestina Southeast and Jakub Marechko, who had won the race the previous year. The break that did get away was brought back together with five kilometers to go. Marechko was led out by his Vilia Southeast teammates and was able to complete the job for win number one of this 2016 edition. Marechko beating Marini between the duel of the Italians, 1-0, Thalassia's winner. So Golovash continued to lead by three seconds, but Marechko with bonus seconds up to sixth. Add on to stage two, moving on from Changxing to Wuxing, the south of Taihu Lake, and some beautiful hotel architecture. We were treated to some traditional dance, the riders, a serious job of signing in as the weather had changed to murky skies. The breakaway went away and it was chased down by a combination of Nippo Vini Fantini and Villia Southeast. Originally at seven men, the break down to three when a careless crash happened back in the peloton. Thankfully, no injuries. And with 20 kilometers to go, the gap was going down to just two remaining leaders, Korea and Popkov choosing to have an argument rather than ride together. A crash at 3.6 kilometers to go, so hot break for the leader. Golovash out of the orange jersey. In the meantime, the man in the green, Marechko, will be looking to swap the points jersey for the general overall classification lead. He did his bit, won the sprint, and would take over that orange jersey. Two from two for Jakub Marechko. So Marechko in the lead by six seconds from Nicola Marini, Corani remaining in third place, and Bailey of Australia in fourth at seven seconds. Well, a change to this edition would see the riders go south, into the countryside, into the hills, and up to Anji, the mountain stage, the one that surely would decide the overall general classification. Bad weather, though, hampered efforts to try and show the mountain stage on the day. This is where they started, stage three, 106.3 kilometers, starting from the Hello Kitty theme park in Anji. Heading for a couple of laps around the edge of the city. Intermediate sprints as well there. That before the final approach to the mountain, an 18 kilometer climb, not too steep in gradient, but the length and the poor weather would surely affect proceedings. Oh, a very, very rainy start. Poor conditions, and it'll be a really hard day for the riders. It'll be a while before a breakaway was allowed to go. Breakaway did contain some top teams, though. Intermediate sprint really was a sideshow for what was to happen towards the end of the day. team, but yet we've been so strong in preparing the sprints, mopping up the points. In the meantime behind, it was business time for those in the break and looking to chase them down. And once the climb began, Jakub Marechko would cede his advantage. So we'd have a new leader, whatever happened. Marechko knowing that on the climb as a sprinter, he would not survive against the pack. And the breakaway knew it was just a matter of time before those who wanted to win the stage and the race overall would catch them. So with a mountain in the distance, it's time to stretch out and see what riders had left. It's about to get very cold and visibility would drop almost immediately to absolutely nothing. First attack came from the breakaway as they hit the wet roads of the climb. Deadwood shed at the bottom, and those big thick leg sprinters knew that the final 18 kilometers was not for them. 
St George Merida were one of the teams trying to take it to the rest of the peloton. Jay Dutton, their climber, the man they were trying to put in the right place. Nipovini Fantini brought a team of sprinters, so chose to get a man in the break on the day. A couple of crashes and coming together in the dark further back in the peloton didn't help things. And approaching the final 10 kilometers, the peloton would come for the breakaway behind. Billy South East would be working for a combination of Yonder Godoy and Giuseppe Fonzi. Fonzi recently in the top 10 at the Tour of Hainan. And Yonder Godoy, as the sprinter was dropped at the back, a very talented Venezuelan climber. First attacks would come from the peloton. And Victor Nino, at his 43 years of age, would be the man to start things off. Villiers tried to control things behind, stringing the peloton out. And with the gradient at just 4 or 5% most of the way up the 18-kilometer climb, it will be a very, very fast ascent. So Nino going again. And yet more weaker riders shed out the back. Are three or four tunnels on the way as several riders started to lose the wheels. Delco Marseille well represented. And young Van Engelen of Park Hotel in the main group as well. Fonzie was there and Cameron Bailey too. The Australian, 26 years of age, targeting this stage in the colours of attacking Team Gusto. Five kilometres to go and it would be Bailey's turn just to turn on the power. Giuseppe Fonzi following him well. And those who wanted to be a part of this group from behind had to make their move at that point. Yondor Godoy was one of those riders. Another, Colorado. So Godoy's attack would be chased down. And once the visibility dis disappeared, into the final kilometre or two, Cameron Bailey would make his own attack. Leo Duque in the group chasing on behind an exceptional performance from the sprinter. But Bailey would hold off and finish just a handful of seconds ahead of Duque, now riding for the French team Delco Marseille. He couldn't see much until he got there, but Cameron Bailey did enjoy his win when he took it, his first as a professional on the UCI calendar. Cameron Bailey taking the stage. The climb was really fast. Um, I was in the big ring for the whole thing, um, so that's just a a sign of how quick the climb was. So it was not like a normal climb. I was, I was making sure I was saving energy a lot more than, than you normally would on a climb, trying to follow wheels and stuff. So the whole way until maybe 2K to go, I was, I was never hitting the wind. I was just staying behind people. And, and then maybe a K to go, after a few attacks when I just went as hard as I could, tried not to look back. And my first UCR win and my first snow rule jersey I've had at a uh, UCR race. So um, we're gonna try and protect it as best as we can. I believe we can do it. And, uh, yeah, we'll do everything we can to keep that jersey. Now before protecting it, he would enjoy it and lead by 14 seconds from Giuseppe Fonzi with Godoy in third at 17, Duque fourth and Wong in fifth. Bailey, the new leader in orange. Jakub Marezco, Villar Sautis, sono contento di essere qui al Tayu Lake per, per, questa, per questo tour. So the tour of Taihu Lake stage five is coming up, starts in Nantong, heading all the way to Haimon, longest stage of the race, should be one for the sprinters, we'll have finishing laps and a very slightly better weather forecast with the sun just trying to poke its head through the clouds, just to the northwest of Shanghai. Well, sending off from Nantong, you can see it's a heavily built up area, heading out towards the industrial area, right on the banks of the river Yangtze. And as we just saw with that little update to the race situation, stage three did change the race. Cameron Bailey now in the lead. Cameron Bailey, just 26 years of age, riding for Ataki Team Gusto and showing that he really has grasped his moment after a string of consistent and successful performances in the last few Asian races as well. 
Well, when we come back in just a moment, we'll be showing you the best of stage four. Stage four was one for the sprinters, and it was uh, a race where Cameron Bailey himself had to just hang on, finish in the peloton and make sure that everything was done correctly. Thanked his team for a good uh, piece of work on that day. Uh, moving on, this would be the area in Nantong where they would start stage five. Stage five of seven altogether. Eight if you include the prologue, of course, at the start of last weekend. And we've moved north of Taihu Lake now into the built up area. Nantong for stage five before the race moves west in 24 hours and then west again into the countryside for the final stage on Saturday. Well, the temperature not too much improved on the previous couple of days. Certainly, the particip participation had disappeared. But, uh, an improved forecast going into the weekend should bring better weather towards the end of this race. Hello, I'm Cameron Bailey and uh, from Attacky Team Gusto and uh, welcome to Tour of Taihu Lake 2016. The Tour of Taihu Lake moves on and moves on showing off more of this wonderful region of China. It's one of the most visited in uh, tourism. It's also one of the most scenic and built up at the same time. Maintaining tradition whilst advancing in industry, this really has opened eyes to everyone who's visited and taken part in this race. Next up would be Wu Jiang for stage four. And Wu Jiang combining the ancient and the modern extremely well. In one shot, able to see how the architecture changes from that next to the river at which we're looking now to the huge tower blocks and offices that were visible from the race route on stage four. So from the hills and Anji, race would move on. Stage four would take place entirely in Wujang. So riders came to sign on amongst very windy and cold conditions for a flat stage. Well, I'm delighted. Extremely happy to have the tour of Taihu Lake here. It's a great opportunity for Wu Jiang to show off what we can offer. I'm sure the riders will enjoy every moment of riding on our roads. It's great to see amateur participation as well as the professionals too. And I've seen lots of smiling faces here at the start. I sincerely hope for plenty of success and a good day for all. So after the opening ceremony, it would be to the course itself. A pretty simple one, really. A brand new highway that had been constructed. 117.4 kilometers in total, six laps of the course, with a start and finish on the same South Zhongshan Road. No real elevation to speak of. 
should have been one for the sprinters to intermediate sprints along the way. Today it will be very fast uh, and uh, yes, we will work uh, probably to arrive at the sprint and uh, to do our best. Arrive at the sprint, do their best. Who would be the best though at the end of the day? So far, it had been Jakub Marecko dominating in the flat finishes. Nicolas Marini, the rest, hoping to try and change that dominance. There's a little bit of wind blowing out on the course, and the race position right on the edge of the city allowed you to see both the ancient and the modern. Attacking team Gusto would have the race lead, and they put a man in the breakaway to try and calm things down and have an element of control. The Iranian team Tabriz Petrochemical would try and bridge across. In the meantime, in the peloton behind, Nippo Vini Fantini, Vilia Southeast, the team's looking to control things. Intermediate sprint would look like this. And once Villiers Southeast took control, it will be they who would attempt to set up the sprint. Into the final quarter, they seem well positioned with the Latvian team Riet move for the second sprint stage in success and also up there at the front. But look out for those orange jerseys of Nippo Vini Fantini. In the end, coming around and finally, finally able to get the victory that they'd hoped for since arriving in China. Marechko in the green on the left, boxed in. Marini, the 23-year-old from Italy, getting the seventh victory of his career. And he was pretty happy about it. Yeah. It's been a very long sprint. My team did a good job. Unlucky Stacchiotti had a flat wheel in the last two kilometers. Colin helped me. They did an amazing sprint. <laughs> So despite that problem with the flat tyre, Marini was able to overcome it. He finished ahead of Marechko with Leo Duque crucially taking four bonus seconds and finishing third. Could that be useful for the overall? It would on the day because it moved him up to third at 15 seconds. But Cameron Bailey had a good day. He maintained his lead, 14 ahead of Ponzi. Stage and the day though, belong to Marini. Hi, I'm uh, Shinichi Fukushima, the team manager of the Nippo Vini Fantini. And uh, this is a third race in uh, China this year, and uh, we ho try to hope uh, yeah, win the stages. So you've seen stages two and three. Stage four and a sprint just played there for you. Stage five is what's coming up next. You can see that the atmosphere is uh, a little misty today. The sun is trying its best to poke itself through, through the clouds where we sit talking to you at the finish line. I can promise you that. Let's see if we can get some warmer temperatures for later. I know that the riders felt the wind on stage four. They're certainly dressed up and wrapped up for another sprint ride on stage five. Images you're looking at now came from the start in Nantong. Nantong right on the Yangtze River. Actually has five separate ports in the town of Nantong itself. One of the first cities to really open up to the rest of the world in China. Extremely established and again goes on as far as the eye can see. On the road I can tell you that there are nine riders in a breakaway. Attacky team Gusto again controlling things and getting a man up there. He's Ben Hill. And Ben Hill will be looking to be as serious as possible in the breakaway this time. Controlling everything from the front. In good company as well and I think forcing Villiers Southeast to do most of the chasing. So the longer stage is coming up. 
fact, uh, heading between two different districts of, of one single city. Haiman, where we finish, is uh, just a district of the city of Nantong. And 148 kilometers from start to finish with laps at the start and four laps at the end. And those four laps taking on a circuit that has seen the amateur sport thief race take place in the morning. Lots of top quality gear on show, some very eager and enthusiastic riders around. So the spectators who've bothered to make the trip down have been treated to two race finishes and a couple of high octane sprints I'm sure so Kamarechko grab one back over Marini or will Marini make it 2-2 two -two? that's the question maybe a third party involved in the sprint we'll have to wait and see for now, there's a breakaway to chase. I can tell you they had a gap My of name is Jay Dutton. I'm from the Australian continental team, St. George Marina, and uh, we're very excited to get underway with the 2016 Taihu Lake. So this is the stage, stage five, 148 kilometers. A couple of laps in Nantong before the four finishing laps we mentioned. Up off Guangzhou Road and finishing on Xiangxian Avenue. Flat as a pancake towards the end. So the Yangtze River flowing thousands of miles from the west merges into the sea in Nantong. And the peloton would merge together to sign in in the morning. Again, a very cold morning, a windy morning in the east of China. Cameron Bailey in charge of the race. Well, I'm the manager of Ya Zhu Li sponsor of the Tour of Taihu. I'm very much looking forward to this race. The Tour of Taihu is now a global event and I hope it can be extremely successful. I'm really looking forward to having a great day here and I'm sure all the athletes are as well. So this is how they lined up at the start. 
Again, the cold weather gear was very much in evidence. Dignitary is firing their guns. And no neutralized zone here at the Tour of Taihu. Attacks would come from the very start. So a stressful start there for Jakob Marechko, right on the front of the peloton. Race leader Cameron Bailey just behind. Orange jersey on underneath the uh, team attacking Gusto Gile that he was wearing to keep warm. Lots of arm warmers you can see as well. And there are those attacks that gone straight away. Nine riders got in front, and amazingly they managed to stay in front. And it wouldn't take too long for them to get a bit of a gap. So Ben Hill following from Ataki Team Gusto once the likes of Ma had attacked. Matthias van Aken there as well, the Belgian rider for start Vaxis, who have been in every single breakaway so far. And the nine riders were gone to take sprints number one and two in the first hour and a half of racing. A very good morning from China and the tour of Taihu Lake 2016. Break of nine riders at the head of stage five. There's Ben Hill from Ataki Team Gusto, and what an atmosphere it must be in their team. They have the race lead at the moment through Cameron Bailey. 61 kilometers remain. They've got a gap up the road, the nine riders of one minute and 15 seconds. In the pink there with them is uh, Darcy Ellerim Norton. He's an Australian riding for Team St. George Merida. And meanwhile, at the back of the peloton chasing on. They know that uh, the rest of the riders involved are Ma Guan Tong. Altanzul Antansuk, Andrei Vendolsky, Nazari Daglian of Iran, Matthias van Aken, Melorim Zoltan, Genki Yamamoto and Jan Andrei Kuli. Now, that group seems to have been whittled down in the last few minutes. Six remain at the front as the weather, as we saw at the bottom, not the warmest with the wind building and perhaps becoming menacing later on. Intermediate sprint early on was won by Ben Hill. Ma came second with Vendolsky coming across in third place. So bonus seconds and points mocked up by Attacky Team Gusto. Sprint two then uh, looked like this. Ma still there, you could see that uh, Attacky Team Gusto were doing a fantastic job of working so hard. Really, really well fought out. Nobody could get around the Australian's wheel. Kudos again to Ben Hill, gaining, if anything, towards the line, beating Ma right to that finish line. And Altanzul Altansuk of the Chinese team of Hang Shang coming third. And following that sprint, that's where the uh, breakaway group seemed to split again, losing a bit of dead wood after. Uh, one and a half hours of racing. And once Ben Hill had got away here, Ma followed him. They seemed to stay out and leave those three who couldn't contest it behind. So Hill, Ma and Vindolski on sprint number one, five, three and one respectively for the points. That's for the green jersey classification. And three, two and one bonus seconds as well. Sprint two looking like this with Hill and Ma, the same order, first and second, but the Mongolian rider Al Santuk in third place. He'd take a point and a second. One minute and 30 as we go back live to the race, 59 kilometers to go. We're expecting a sprint today, and these are the riders in the break. Yamamoto, Hill, Al Tansuk, Elorin Norton, and Nazari Daglian. And they're joined by Vendolsky, the Czech rider. So six riders up the front. Riders coming on to the finishing circuit pretty soon. And now one minute and 30 ahead of the peloton, who I think will be pretty happy with this situation right now. All the work down to the sprinters team of Villa Triestina Southeast, and, and not particularly to Nippo Vino Fantini. They got the win just uh, 24 hours ago, as so they're approaching the finish line for the first time here. Getting the win and being able to make sure that they're in the breakaway the following day. No chasing for Nippo today, and they can save all of their energies 
for trying to make sure that they are out there in the break and able to chase things down. And organize a sprint at the end. Can they beat Villiers for a second successive day? That's the question. In the meantime, there's another building story that's bubbling under as they go over the finish line for the first time. And that is Leo Duque. Third in the sprint yesterday, four bonus seconds, only three days of his professional career remaining. His team have been helping to ride at the front, and it's a bit of an achievement, really, because there's only three other riders in the team left on the road other than the Colombian Duque. Of course, if they continue to be up there in the sprints and take bonus seconds, you could see Ataki Team Gusto's orange jersey under threat by the end of the week. Duque now up to second in the overall general classification as we see the peloton come through. We'll get a good timed gap here. One minute and 25 was the last estimation. As you can see, they're fairly strong out at the moment, so the chase is on. With 57 kilometers to go. It's nice that the sun's made an appearance as well, just as uh, you've joined us live. So the Pelton about across the finish line, led by Villa Southeast. East. Moore there as well, they've been there or thereabouts organising the sprints, and Leo Duque's team, Delco Marseille Provence. In the Pelton as we get a brief shot of yesterday's victor, Nicolas Marini. There's Quentin Valogne as well, the sprinter who's not quite been able to be up there for Novo Nordisk as he might have liked. So four laps to go then. Again, it's that pair of Tedeschi. And his mate up the front for Villiers. That's a George Morita not far behind. RDS team as well with their uh, Colombian granddaddy Nino, 43 years of age. And the green jersey of Jakub Manic. Go on, show. 56 kilometers to go. It's almost time to get switched on and get ready. But of course, this gap very, very manageable with the distance we have remaining. Almost 100 kilometers into the riding today of what is the longest stage of this seventh edition of the Tour of Taihu Lake. One minute and 20 seconds is the gap. And quick little glimpse down the left hand side before he hid away from the camera again in the blue of Leo Duque. There's Cameron Bailey on the left hand side in the leader's jersey. We'll talk more about Bailey, we'll talk more about Duque, possible permutations for the overall general classification as this morning progresses. And the green jersey there of Jakub Marechko just behind looking to sew up the points classification. So with the riders that have got away, the pace has slowed down in the last hour or so. It isn't going to be the rapid, quick day that we thought might happen. Confirm the break with Hill, Altan Suk, Yamamoto is there as well. 192 was uh, Vindolski, the Czech rider. Mars, the rider at the back, the Chinese rider in the white and red. And here in the orange, Cameron Bailey. It's been quite a few days for him. First experience in a leader's jersey in a UCI race. First win as a professional cyclist. He knows that you're all watching him down under in Australia Live as well. So a very good afternoon to you in Australia. Lots of you, I'm pretty sure, willing this young man on to victory in a stage race. It's all very new, the media attention at the end of it, the interviews he has to do before. Jakob Medic is a man who's very much used to that as a sprinter, used to winning races. Of course, it's the overall prize that's up for grabs as far as Bailey's concerned. He has his stage win already. Can he hang on? But his biggest threat at the moment it comes from Leo Duque, not from anybody in this breakaway. Leonardo Duque has one professional stage victory to his name. That came 10 years ago in the Tour du Limousin, race in the west of France. And Duque is now 36. And he's at 14 seconds from the overall general classification. He also retires in three days. And there's uh, Jong. 
Wong Mei Ying is now on his way to the World Tour. This will be his penultimate race in the Wong Wisdom Hung Sheng, pardon me, colours. He's the best Chinese rider in the race. He's off to Bahrain and Vincenzo Nibali's team. They've already devised his calendar as well. You'll see him for the first time on the World Tour at the Tour Down Under at the end of January. So there's Ma, his teammate in the break. Fendolski in the yellow and black. And this is Yamamoto. He's had a really hard working week. The man from Nippo Vini Fantini. Japanese rider in the Italo Japanese team. And Dukla Praha have done plenty more than just make up the numbers here. Eller and Norton in the pink. He's one of the two Australians in the break. And Ben Hill. He's in the yellow and black at the front, representing the leaders' team. That's a tacky team, Gusto. Well, plenty of bike paths and lanes. This is uh, a heavily industrialised area where we finished today in Hyman. But it's uh, got the feeling of a new town about it. Everything constructed to, to improve workers' lives, give them their leisure time and try and get them out on their bikes. And we saw great evidence of that in the amateur race just a few hours ago. Really good to see lots of real cycling fans and pretty serious athletes as well lining up. They had uh, all the kits and deep section wheels and very expensive carbon frame bikes. We even had riders wearing skin suits. And I'll tell you what, they were brave riders because we were talking five or six degrees this morning. Look at this, all strung out. Bit of a surprise, maybe, with the gap at just one minute and 25. But we're on flat roads, flat, long, straight roads. And look at this, Delco, Marseille, KTM committing riders to the front. The sole reason for that is the presence of Leo Duque. He's a Colombian rider now, naturalised as a Frenchman. He's the man on the left inside, just gone out of his shop now in the light blue jersey yellow Delco album off across the front 36 years of age now the man from Cali in Colombia started out as a, a track rider actually as we look at Cameron Bailey now wait, wait, wait. Bailey himself has come through the Australian development program a bit of a late blossomer at 26 but a win in a stage race at UCI level would be certainly something to catapult him to fame worldwide. There is the aforementioned Duque on the right-hand side of the shot now. Second of the two riders in the blue jerseys. As we come to another Colombian on the left. Victor Nino. Excellent on the climb the other day. and well, He's a good seven years older than Leo Duque, but he's still going. <laughs> Duque will stop his career. Very good career it has been, including, by the way, a win in a stage of the Vuelta España, one of the three Grand Tours. It came uh, almost a decade ago. Three more days for Duque. Can he take this orange jersey off the shoulders of Cameron Bailey? That's the question he'll be asking. If he's to do it, he'll do it through bonus seconds. There are no other stages, really, apart from on the last day where we have a couple of small climbs that really lend them opportunities to anything other than a bunch of sprinters. I've spoken to a couple of the sprinters and they think that even on the last day, despite the hills, there'll be uh, an opportunity or two to bring it back together for a sprint. A couple of climbs up to 100 metres. But of course the last few kilometres are going to be pretty either downhill or on the flat on that stage. Number 10, 6 and 4 bonus seconds on the line every day. Duque has already finished in the top three on two occasions in sprints. He's finished second, he's finished third. Can he be up there for the next few days? So just under 50 kilometers to go then on stage five of this tour of Taihu Lake. Hi, I'm Shinichi Fukushima, the team manager of the Nippo Vini Fantini. And uh, this is a third race in uh, China this year, and uh, we ho try to hope, uh, yeah, win the stages.
50 k's to go then. Lovely to see so many people on the side of the road watching this. For many, it will be the first experience of professional bike racing at this level. And it's the first experience at this level for a tacky team gusto, believe it or not. Certainly having the leader's jersey in a race like this. Their compatriots from Australia, well, it's their first 2.1 race. As we see uh, a couple of the remaining riders being taken back in. They were out in the break earlier on. That was uh, Matthias van Enken of Start Vaxis. Alongside him was Nasari Dakhlian of Iran. Ellen Norton goes back to the car. Talked about one Australian team who has the lead. Tacky team Gusto for St George Merida. It's the first ever time they've competed in a 2.1 race. Never mind had the lead. So Nazari Davian in the white there, the Iranian who we just mentioned is going to be swallowed straight back up by the peloton. Matthias Fanaken as well, <laughs> Belgian rider riding for the Serbian team Start Vaxis. We've seen Chris Mancilla, the Chilean, in the top ten a couple of times in the sprint, but the biggest moment for the team in blue there, just shaking the hand of his friend from Iran, has been provided by René Correia, who's been in the break a couple of times. So still Drapari, still Tedeschi working at the front. Delco Marseille, KTM, continuing to chase things down. It's the Yangtze River in the background. And here's Darcy Eller and Norton on the left hand side. Ma in the white there. And 120 behind the peloton. It has sped up somewhat in the last few kilometers. One straight long line. And Villiers probably don't want to take any chances today. Team Gusto, it's been an easy day for them so far. For them, it's all about avoiding crashes, avoiding silly moments, keeping their own man in the break as long as possible so they don't have to ride at the front. They'll be very happy with the situation right now. Altna van Engelen of Parkdale Falk Falkenburg Cycling Team. It's definitely great to be here at Lake Taihu Cycling Tour. You're watching live coverage of the Tour of Taihu Lake 2016, and we're into the final 46 kilometers now of what is stage five on the road of this race. Day six, as we had the prologue, remember? Leading since stage three has been Cameron Bailey of Australia. He took the big mountain stage that we didn't see very much of at the time due to the weather. Thankfully, the sun is breaking through the clouds now, and it's actually a decent forecast for the next couple of days. In terms of what's happening in the race, I think we're forecast to sprint today. One minute and 15 seconds back from the six-man breakaway. Started the day as nine, by the way. Six left up the front. And look at this, one long line. Delco Marseille KTM doing a lot of the chasing. It's because they have uh, Leonardo Duque as uh, their sprinter. Sprinter who came second on the mountain stage. Of course, he's not the pure thick leg sprinter we saw on the track in the early 2000s. He's now uh, since developed into a very well respected road captain, a bit more of a ruler who can climb a bit. I think the Fran Ventosos or the Jose Joaquim Rojases of this world. But in what is his retirement race, he could be set for a farewell and a golden one too, or let's say an orange one with that leader's jersey. Job still to be done for Attacky Team Gusto, who've been going about their business pretty well. They have their man in the breakaway. As the best young rider in the race, that's uh, Lucas De Rossi. Young rider who's only been on the road for a couple of years, actually. He's come from mountain biking. He's wearing the blue jersey, and the, you can see he's on domestic duty as well today. That blue jersey stuffed full of bidons and bottles gels and bars 
And this is the race as well as the mountain stage where they'll have to eat the most today, the longest stage. Still relatively short as far as professional bike racing is concerned, 148 kilometers. And the fact that it is pan flat as well on beautifully tarmacked roads will make it that bit more fast. So the locals have done a, a great job remodifying this, uh, what was industrial wasteland on the banks of the river Yangtze. Lots of greenery, lots of parks, plenty of sports facilities too. And this is what this race is about in part as well. It's not just the elite level of cycling, it's about increasing participation, which you've seen evidence of already this week. Participation in the breakaway is very good here. Look, everybody rolling on and through. Nobody really hanging on or being lazy, having to coax anybody else into doing work. That's the only way there is even the minute possibility that they may survive on a course like this. Look at it, long straight roads. Lunchtime. I don't know what is for lunch for Ma Guangtong. Wisdom Hung Shang rider, and it's a team that's had a really good week so far. We've had Zhao Jingbiao up there, and before Wang Mei Yin in one of his final races for his third division continental Chinese team. He's taken protagonism with the red jersey. He's also in the top five overall, too. So still an outside bet to take something if he can get involved with bonus seconds and the like. But at more than 20 seconds back, it's a little more unrealistic. 1-2-2 two, two there is uh, Altenzul Altensuk. Altenzul and Altensuk from Mongolia, 24 years of age. Former national champion, in fact. He's ridden quite a bit in China this year for the uh, famous tour of Qinghai Lake, which is widely recognized as the most famous race in China. The problem for global recognition is that it takes place at the same time as the Tour de France. Four Ks to go, 120 the gap. Again, evidence from the air this time of everybody working together. And some nice views close up on the side of the road. A little bit of conversation here. Now, oh, is that the Nippo Vini Fantini rider Yamamoto just deciding that he isn't going to take his turn? It's interesting if that's the case. I'd be very surprised if that was the case so early, but we'll see. In the meantime, Alton Suk looks like he can't do another turn as well, so this could be a bit of a crucial moment for the breakaway. Ready. Because there are three Ready. intermediate sprints right. today. The next one of those is Ready. coming up. Perhaps conversation as to who wants what or who will be allowed to go for what. In the meantime, in the peloton, there's the orange jersey, Cameron Bailey. Bailey, who's had a, a really consistent year, actually. Some really good results in Asian stage races. He, Finished seventh in the GC at the Tour of Japan. Up there in Japan Cup as well. Fifth in uh, the Kokonosha Tour in Poland, which was a, a six-stage race. Also top 10 in the Tour of Thailand, top 20 in the Tour of the Philippines, and a good start to the year when he uh, finished in the top 30 at the Herald Sun Tour. Remember, a race won by, by Chris Froome, the Tour de France winner. third season for him at this continental level and in Singapore as well can he make it his first stage race win second in a leader's jersey anyway today so it's all a learning experience the the media commitments are part of that as well Pressure that everybody's looking at you in the peloton, side of the road, the presentation. And the mental aspect of, of how you handle the pressure of being in the lead. Right hand turn coming up then. And this is what it'll look like when we come towards the finish line, by the way. When we come through here, there'll be three laps to go. Intermediate sprint coming up at the next passage of the finish line. So how they take this on, there's uh, Ma at the front, 
Hill looking in and around at the moment. You can see the gap's gone down to a minute and ten. That's because Yamamoto is going to go for this intermediate sprint. Hill is there as well. Just behind him, you can see Vondolski chasing on. Yamamoto at the front in the orange. It's a long, long way to hold out here, and I think Hill's got on the right wheel. Intermediate sprint then is playing out. Hill comes around him. It's really good stuff. Vondolski, though, trying to get in the slipstream. 50 metres to go here for Hill. He's won the first two. Hill's out in front. He knows he's got it, and that's a really good job well done from Attacky Team Gusto today. So Ben Hill out there to take his third sprint of the day. That's 15 points. And nine bonus seconds mopped up as well. So good stuff from Ben Hill. And of course, with nobody being really dangerous in the overall general classification out there in the break, it means that attacky team Gusto don't have to do too much riding behind, if any. A little bit of messing about before we got to the intermediate sprint, just to uh, reduce the gap one bit. There is Sofia Merignat, by the way, the Frenchman chasing on for Delco. The 19-year-old uh, rider, just racing as a stagiaire, in fact. Started out life uh, pretty well as a stagiaire at the Ronde Lizard. 16th place overall there. Then came to the Tour of Nam where he goes through the finish line. So this so 110 then. 41.6 kilometers to go. And out they go away onto those straight roads once more. It's a fairly simple finish. Nice and wide corner going into that final bend. Positioning will be important as we take that sprint three result once more Ben Hill Andre Vendolsky and Genki Yamamoto the Japanese rider in the third place so here was the sprint once more Yamamoto through the middle had to go for a real long one there 300 meters out and with Hill playing it clever Onto the wheel, he knew to go from 150. The Dukla Braha rider behind, attempting to try and take something Vendolsky. But he'll have the pure speed to get away, and he's performed a fantastic job today for his team. Band of the peloton then. 40 kilometers to go. Gap's grown again at 115. I think they'll be pretty happy to keep this under control for another couple of laps. So, 40 kilometres to go. Gap out at 1.15. We're off for a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment with the rest of this Stage 5. Marezco, Villar Sautis, sono contento di essere qui al Tayu Lake per, per, questa, per questo tour. So there are around 40 kilometers to go. It's at the uh, breakaway still out there peloton pretty happy to hold them where they are at the moment no real rush to bring this back just yet in the meantime we get a moment's relief to look on to nantong nantong did begin life as part of the ancient chinese civilization 
then transferred into what was known as the first modern city in China, the earliest self-designed and totally managed model city by Chinese people. But it's never forgotten its culture that's very, very entwined with the river and the sea. There's five ports I mentioned just in the city of Nantong. The heavy industry, and of course the relationship with Shanghai just down the road. In sporting terms, Nantong does have uh, a pretty good pedigree as well. 18 world champions in different sports have been born here. And as far as that industry that I mentioned, much of it is to do with the textile. One of the three largest distribution centers for home textiles in the world. In fact, turning up the hotel last night, there was a, there was a conference on. Hello, I'm Cameron Bailey and uh, from Attacky Team Gusto and uh, welcome to tour of Taihu Lake 2016. Back at the tour of Taihu Lake 2016, it's stage five. The breakaway stayed out there and still motoring on, 37.5 kilometers to go and after messing around a little bit for that uh, last intermediate sprint, the final intermediate sprint of the three on the menu for today, gap had gone down by about 15 to 20 seconds they've since been able to recover that 125 everybody's made friends again and we're all working together in harmony the look around there from uh, Eller and Darcy Norton just to make sure Genki Yamamoto was going to play the game looks as though he is and this is Vindolski rider from Czech Republic back in the peloton Still collaboration between the, the Italians and the French. Villa Triestina in those yellow red, luminous red. jerseys with the grey and red on them. Easily identifiable by the bikes and the helmets. The blue for the French team, Delcourt, yeah, Marseille, KTM. They were at this race last year under their former guys of Lapon Marseille. That's when they were a development team, but they decided to move up to the second division this year professional continental level, invest a little bit more money, try to compete with the big teams. Hasn't been the most successful of first years at Pro Conti level, but it's always a very difficult transition. We're getting news of a rider out of the peloton and try to attack things and you can just see here it is starting to break up again one minute 30 of a gap Yamamoto looks uh, like he's struggling to close the wheel same with Vandolski now is that Vandolski saying enough is enough I'll see Eller and Norton was the man who originally closed the gap they will know these roads now they've completed the first lap Two and a half of these laps remain. You can just hear the wind. A little blustery out there today. Probably not quite enough to make sure that teams can make the difference in any crosswinds. But never say never. A 
That's Altanzul Altansuk, Mongolian rider, the former champion who we were talking about just before the last commercial break. In the meantime, guess who they're supporting? And here he is, Ma Guangdong, as if on cue. Chinese rider riding for the Chinese team. And he's going to get plenty of a big cheer as he comes past. And trying to ride together with Al Tansuk. In the meantime, it's Darcy Eller and Norton, who's the man trying to close the gap. Plenty of smiles and, and first tastes of professional bike racing. It's one of the most accessible sports that you can find on the planet. I mean, you can ride on the same road as the pros ride. Get on the famous mountains. How much does it cost to have a game and a kickabout at Wembley, eh? That's now on impossible. Lil Duque and his dream as a professional there in the blue is almost over. Three more days as a professional bike rider. Will he end it in the win? This is the lone attacker we've had. He's come from the Brazilian team. It's Diniz. Diniz, the one of five Brazilians in the Funvic Soul Cycles team. That they're a professional continental team, a second division team from South America, racing the most part on the UCI Americas Tour, though they were uh, in the Tour of the Algarve at the start of the year. He's just got a handful of seconds on the Villa Southeast train. Orange jersey there, spotted coming past. And there's the green jersey of Jakob Marechko, way down in the peloton. That's because there are still 34 kilometres remaining. I expect in the next 15 kilometers or so, he'll slowly move up to the front and be in the right position. And the good news about the racing today, look at those big wide roads that we're on. There's plenty of space with which to move up. And I think had being boxed in yesterday, he would have been a bit disappointed with that towards the end. His team, as they have done ever since he landed on Chinese soil, has been working extremely hard for him. Look out for that man, though. Second in the train of riders in the blue. Leonardo Fabio Duque. Who's actually a points race specialist when he was on the track. So he's going to have a very good road career, mostly in French teams. Hence his naturalization as a Frenchman. Did play a part as a road captain, though, in uh, Claudio Corti's Team Colombia. And it came to that very sad end a couple of years ago. Repercussions in the press and the arguing over where the money went still carrying on there. So you're looking at the main group, 130. Plenty of excitement at the front, though, attacking each other. And <laughs> I'm not sure it's the right moment to do so, because if they have any chance of surviving, they have to work together. Maybe that combativity prize is uh, exactly what they're looking for. We talked about sports facilities, by the way. Look at this as an example. Brand new soccer pitches that have just been built. There's the bike track on the right hand side as well. Five aside pitches as well. Well, they've Chinese soccer and football have made a, a big investment in the last few years. You've seen that in the professional league with some big money signings. And just in the last couple of weeks, Marcello Lippi has been appointed as the national coach. Marcello Lippi of Juventus fame, of course, and it Italy World Cup winning fame. He no longer has the, the cigarette in his mouth on the, the subs bench, but He's enjoyed it over here. He actually won the Asian Champions League for a couple of years in succession with uh, Guangzhou Evergrande, one of the biggest football teams in Asia. Meanwhile, on the road, this is what's happening. Two riders at the front, one from China, one from Mongolia, both riding for Chinese teams. Ma Guangdong in the red and uh, Altanzul Altansuk in the white. This, in the meantime, is Sofiane Marigna, the 19-year-old stagiaire who we were talking about a moment ago. 
Only a second stage race since joining as a stagiaire. The RTS team in the pink and black. That's the Lufshan team in the green there, the light green. We thought they had a stage yet where Vitaly Popkov has an attack towards the end. I wonder if he'll turn up on cue with 20 kilometers to go. And this is the head of the race. Ma Guangtong riding well with his mate from over the border in Mongolia. And they've got company now. Darcy Ellerim Norton of Australia in the pink and black. The lead of the race is three. Jakub Marezko, Villar Sautis, sono contenti di essere qui al Tayu Lake per, per, questa, per questo tour. Three up the road, Ma Guan Tong, Al Tanzul, Al Tansuk, and now El Dorsi Ellerim Norton. Darcy Ellerim Norton on the left hand side. He'll be allowed just a couple of minutes to recover. Running 176 on his back. He's one of the taller riders in the peloton here this week. Ma just coaxes him into the middle to go through and take his turn. St. George Merida after missing out on the general classification places that they were hoping to challenge for this week. It's left to them to try and push on on the road and offer what they can. Certainly their sponsors will be happy, they've been in breakaways. The last 10 kilometers have ticked away and they'll be approaching the finish line yet again for the next lap pretty soon gap has gone up to one minute and 30 there's Adna van Engelen on the left hand side there the climber who was very close to success the other day Genki Yamamoto's adventure is over for the day really latest good. rider from the break to be swallowed up by the chasing peloton Darcy Norton there. This is the biggest race of his career so far. He only joined in the summer at St. George Marudi. He's uh, a Kiwi himself. Rode at the Tour de Singarak in Indonesia. Finished 31st in the GC there. Best stage placing in 12th on the final stage to Padang. Did take part in the Tour of the Yang Cheng Coastal Wetlands last week. So this is the biggest race of his career, the Tour of Taihu Lake. Finished in the main group on each and every one of the stages so far. My name's Jay Dudden, I'm from the Australian Continental Team St George Merida and uh, we're very excited to get underway with the 2016 Taihu Lake. Ma Guang Tong at the back in the red and white, part of the three-man breakaway now that leads this stage five of the Tour of Taihu Lake. Darcy Elam Norton in the pink and black, he's the young Kiwi riding for St George Merida of Australia. And at the back there, the rider from Mongolia, the former national champion, Altanzul Altansuk. Now, the rider in the middle has been used to being in breakaways in the last few weeks. He's actually the king of the mountains at the tour of Hainan, down in Hainan Island, the tropical region of China in the South China Sea. A little nervous look behind from him, but it's not quite to that stage just yet. They're approaching the finish line. This will be the third passage of the finish for these guys. There will be two laps of this finishing circuit to go once they go across the line. A minute and 25 seconds and 
despite the lead, you have to feel for them. It's a bit of a fool's errand, this. There are some very hungry sprinters behind and some pretty powerful teams to chase them down. It's uh, a circuit that has very little terrain to play with. Very flat, wide open roads, beautiful tarmac. Ideal conditions for a chasing peloton. 28 kilometers remain. And two laps of this 14 kilometer circuit still to go. Paint your face is already on these riders. It is a thankless task, isn't it, being in a breakaway? That's whether the true spirit of cycling really is broken down. Sacrificing yourself for the greater cause. Basically hurting yourself out there in the front of the race. And when it's on telly too, everybody's watching your sort of self-flagellation. Not a pretty sight sometimes, but it's certainly valiant. One minute and 20, the latest time check. Well, that will be uh, a much more accurate figure once this lot pass the line in a minute. In the meantime, Murilo Alfonso alongside Carlos Manarelli chasing on. Two Brazilian riders. And this is a team that should have been uh, a little stronger than it has been this week. They are one of the five second division teams here, and we've hardly seen them. One failed move and the crosswinds to Wuxing. And in the sprints, nowhere near up there as you might have thought. Jakob Marichko just coming back from the car, I think, there. One final chat with the sports directors about how they will play this both riders and sports directors getting a good look at the approach good look at the course but pretty sure that there's nothing too technical for them to take on today there's confirmation of that little Brazilian duo's advantage just 10 seconds on the peloton Villa Southeast and Delco Massey rider in third place there is a rider to look out for and let's not forget Giuseppe Fonzi either We'll see if he didn't have to work really for the man in green here, Jakob Marichko, we'd be considering him much more of a threat to the overall general classification with bonus seconds. Fonzi still in charge of looking after Jakob Marichko. He's at the green in the back here. As far as the final sprint's concerned, will the win 24 hours ago have given Nicolas Marini that confidence that perhaps he was lacking at the start of the week? It's interesting looking at each and every one of his victories actually so far they've all come in the Far East six of them in China one at the Tour of Japan and all in the space of 18 months or so so he's an up-and-coming rider has one in Qinghai Lake has one at both the Tour of China 1 Tour of China 2 races that follow each other in chronological order Tour of China 1 just uh, in mid-September this year that was his previous win up to now so a third win of the year all on Chinese soil for Nicolas Marini only his second year as a professional does already have a contract for next year so it'll be interesting to see if he's given a go at the Giro d'Italia or any of the other Italian stage races next year Tirreno Adriatico to see how he does mix it with people it's the Giro d'Italia team for Nippo Vini Fantini centered around Damiano Cunego breakaway opportunities and it was that effort at the King of the Mountains jersey this year. Breakaway approaching the final 25 kilometers at the Tour of Taihu Lake Stage 5. Hello, Norton looks behind. It'll take a lot longer to get over the line if you keep doing that. I suppose that's the problem with this course as well. There's nowhere else to look at the straight ahead at the dual carriageway. We've seen some beautiful, pretty areas of the Taihu regions. But I'm afraid this isn't particularly one of them for this finish. Riders have been 
greeted by factories along the way. Good news is we've got people on the side of the road. They've done their best to regenerate this post-industrial pot of land. A peloton behind. One minute and 25 further back on this road. Still Villiers, still Delco Marseille. No change at all at the front of the group. Villiers have not had any help with the chase. That is, I suppose, the, the positive side of the tactic we've seen from Nippo Vini Fantini. Getting a man up here in the break has meant that they have not had to chase. Now, if this breakaway does stay out for a little longer, does keep this gap, then you will see Nicolas Marini's team coming to the front to help the chase, because their man in the break has since been absorbed. For now, though, just seeing Villiers' team use a bit more energy up. Twenty-four kilometers still to go. That sunshine that turned up a little early on has taken his hat off again. In the meantime, Ma has put his work hat on. Attacking going, oh, Nello Norton. <laughs> look at that, look at the camera, I'm finished. I am done for the day. So that is St. George Marida's presence in the breakaway, over. Mark looking really strong here. He wants to be on the podium at the end of the day. Remember that it's a most aggressive rider prize. And this uh, Wisdom Hungsheng team has proved itself to be one of the strongest at this race this week. Good recovery for the former national champion of Mongolia there. Altan Suk. It's an interesting team the team he's riding for, actually. They have uh, an almost entirely Mongolian lineup at this race. Vili are riding the centre of the road there, but I'm sure you saw from the helicopter shots, actually, there's the fantastic possibilities that designing a new town opens up is that you can design bike paths look at that left and right able to show off the accessibility of being on a bike in China and 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 there's not a regular visitor to this area of the country I've been really pleasantly surprised by that this week it's been certainly something that where I live in in the west of Europe we can learn from lots of provision and space for riding bikes. Altan Suk on the left hand side in the white jersey of the Laval team. Working together well with Ma. In the meantime, 23 kilometers to go, and attacking team Gusto have just upped their game a little, moved up the orange jersey on the shoulders of the leader, Cameron Bailey. One minute and 30 for the two up the road. This is the Brazilian pairing we saw not long ago. Still in no man's land. You can only think that this is a last ditch attempt to get the jersey on the telly. They're actually on their way, and they've got the lead in sight. But, of course, long straight road doesn't mean you're particularly close to making the catch. This is the right-hand turn. Still another eight kilometres to go before we go across the finish line for the penultimate time. They'll get the bell. Now Delco Marseille to the front. This is interesting. And a real opportunity to try and put everybody else under pressure. Is this the moment where they're going to try and put Ataki Team Gusto under pressure? Into the corner. And we'll have to change. We'll see how it unfolds right after this. Hi, I'm Shinichi Fukushima, the team manager of the Nippo Vini Fantini. 
And uh, this is a third race in uh, China this year, and uh, we ho try to hope, uh, yeah, win the stages. Approaching the final 20 kilometers, Delco Marseille KTM riding at the front and riding to try and put the general classification teams under a bit of pressure. The orange jersey at the moment is on the shoulders of the leader. The leader, of course, is the Australian Cameron Bailey. Attacking Team Gusto, a little further back in the peloton, put under pressure immediately here by Delco Marseille KTM. Perhaps they weren't happy with the rate at which this was coming back from the breakaway. Peloton is closing in quite quickly on the break. Getting a little bit of help from the RTS team. We also have riders from Colombia and also have riders quite high up in the overall general classification. All riders, I'm sure, who want to see Leo Duque finish his career on a positive note. This is the bit of excitement that possibly today's stage has been lacking so far. Again, the straight, wide, flat course doesn't particularly help with that. In the meantime, head of the race is down to one rider. Altanzul, Altansuk, leaving Ma behind. Oof, he won't be leaving anybody else behind. There's not one minute 30 there. It's all coming back together with 20 kilometers to go. And this is going to be really difficult control now for the sprinters teams. There is uh, Lucas De Rossi right at the front. Best young rider in this race. So they've got uh, two things to ride for, really, Delco. And there's that stage win as well. They haven't had one of those yet. Thomas Vauborze, who was the most aggressive rider on race stage one, pardon me. He's the man doing the work at the front, right? Number four on his back. And they only turned it with five riders, did Delco. And they only have four left with Frederick Son Galton not starting the first stage. Reaction straight away from Villiers. They're bringing the yellow jersey up towards the front. Let's just say the green jersey, pardon me. Sprint jersey. An attacky team Gusto. Looking after their man in the orange jersey, also moving to the front. So good reaction from them. Panic over for the moment. The breakaway is going to be brought back, but Delco Marseille KTM very much taking the race to everybody else. There's the orange jersey, brilliantly placed towards the front of the group. Altner van Engelen of Parkdale Falkenburg Cycling Team. It's definitely great to be here at Lake Tahoe Cycling Tour. We head towards Hymen today, stage five, right on the banks of the river Yangtze. Leaving Nantong, one of the largest cities in this part of China, even in the shadow of the giant that is Shanghai. It's a home to a huge nucleus of population and the real industrial motor in China's economic success. On Nantong and Hyman, open to the world. Neck exports leaving one of its many ports on the river Yangtze. This is where we're headed then. Let's go and hear from the locals. Well, as the vice mayor of the Hyman Municipal People's Government, I'm delighted to welcome the tour of Taihu to Hyman. We are a progressive city, open to these world events. I'm delighted this has become a global event, and I hope the development of sport will continue to keep my people happy. 
包容，呃，这样的一个形象，我想都具有非常非常重要的意义。所以我也祝愿我们这一次的公路自行车赛再一次的取得圆满的成功。谢谢大家。Back to the race, back to the peloton, and we're a bit of an impasse right now. This has come back together. This was the moment that everything ended for the breakaway. Delcourt Marseille bringing things back. Mar was the first to be brought back. Altan Suk, though, didn't last too long out in front himself. Now, this is a sprinter's team's worst nightmare. Race coming back together with 18 kilometers to go. It's not the longest of stages. It's the longest of stages this week. But of course, in relation to professional racing around the world, 148 kilometers isn't very much. It's a flat day. We have fresh legs. And a rider such as Mojan Halmuratov of Beijing XDS Innova cycling team has been allowed to attack. Luckily for the sprinter's teams, nobody went with him just yet. But if one or two riders were able to bridge across here, that would make it a very difficult chase into the final few kilometers. We're approaching the finish line, by the way, for the penultimate time. And Hal Muratov has opened up a few seconds of a gap. <laughs> Suspect he's got a little bit of a help from the motorbike as well there. 34 years of age. He's been around for a long, long time. He's ridden in Malaysia for the Trenganu cycling team, one of the, the top teams on the UCI Asia Tour in the last few years. Ridden in China, has ridden in his native Uzbekistan as well. And has been the national time trial champion on six occasions, no less. So he's uh, a gifted rider. Seven wins of a professional. There's Cameron Bailey. Had a brief worrying moment when uh, Delco Marseille just decided to put the pressure on. I don't think they were ever going to stay out there on this flat course, but just wanted to make his team panic, doubt themselves, do a little bit more work than they thought they might have to do. And here's uh, Wang Mei Ying. Wang Mei Ying, the red jersey, on his way to join the very best in the world of cycling on the UCI World Tour, which the International Federation has confirmed there will be 18 UCI World Tour teams for the next two years, 17 the year after that, and then down to 16 by 2020. How long will he be able to stay there? Can he have success? All questions we'll see answered on the road in the next couple of years. There's Jakub Marechko. Well, time to put the business head on for him now. Start Vax's team behind as well. We'll be looking to put Chris Mancilla into the top ten again if they can. Chilean sprinter. And we've seen some really good results so far for Bogdanovic of Rietmu Latvian team. They're in the blue jerseys just at the base of your screen there with the, the darker blue panel on the shorts. Park Hotel Falkenberg as well in the green jerseys there, just behind the leader in the orange. They're looking for Zanotti there, Italian sprinter. Sixteen kilometers to go then. Halmuratov. Six times national champion in the time trial. And of course, his sixth participation in this race, so he's been there almost every year in the Tour of Taihu Lake, a veteran of the Tour of Taihu Lake, with 15 kilometers to go. In the meantime, well, no explanation needed there. Well, there you go. You can tell that um, the rhythm isn't that high at the minute in the peloton. Rarely do you see a comfort break from a sprinter in the last 15 kilometers of a race. I'm pretty sure we didn't need to see it anyway, but rarely do you see it happening. You'd say the last 40 k's you need to be switched on and ready. So this guy isn't obviously putting them under too much stress and strain at the minute. 
Al Muratov. You can actually tell. Look at the peloton behind. It's bunched up. It's wide across the road. The speed is pretty tame for this part of a bike race. This would be the last kilometre then, as they come through the next time. You can just see the, the red triangle hanging over the road. That's the Flamme Rouge, the red kite. That we denominate the last kilometre within cycling. Final 500 metres will take place on these straight roads here, so the turn coming with about 600 to go. Last look at it for the peloton before the bell goes, and they go on the final lap. Trapari at the front, Tedeschi behind. Tireless job for those Italians this week. and still fairly relaxed, 20 seconds. Green jersey safely back at the front. <laughs> Pretty amazing. I don't think Jakob Anechko would be advised to do that at that particular period again in the race. But maybe he feels that in this particular race, the competition is relatively that poor that he is able to do it. He's obviously pulled it off. Still might get a slap on the wrist from the sports director there. 20 seconds. Well, the leaders team forced to do probably a little bit more work than they uh, would have expected today. I think they'd have been pretty happy to see the sprinters teams do the work for them. Attacking team Gusto, but just committing one man. Almoratov, no real dangerous to the overall general classification. Currently in 58th place overall. So only they're out of honour rather than anything. It's the sprinters teams who need to control this 23 second gap but with 13 and a half k's to go. They will feel that they can do that. Now look at the big man in the centre here, and he is a big man, he has the thighs of a track sprinter. Quentin Valogne, French rider, hoping to do better than simply top 10 here. He's uh, Team Novo Nordisk's sprinter. And if you've never heard of Team Novo Nordisk before, they have a, a rather unique message. That is that elite sport is possible when suffering from diabetes. They want to change the image of diabetics, so changing diabetes is their slogan. And they hope to do that by not simply being professionals on the circuit, but also winning races. Javier Mejias, their Spanish rider, has been the most successful in doing that. They could do with a sprint win or two. They have Martin Vachour as well, the Dutchman. Fast man for the finales. Meantime, it's a thankless lap task, part of me being the man to chase out there. Drapari still out there. And there's Chao Jong Biao with uh, Wong Mei in just behind him. Red jersey. Ready? Julian Akparov at the back, he's the teammate of the man out in the front. Al Muratov, and the von Englund again, easy to spot with the, his minute size. You can have all the aero bars in the world, but you're not going to hold off the peloton from this point. Even Tony Martin had struggled today. the speed at which he's travelling. So they're through the finish line for the penultimate time, onto the final lap of this 14-kilometer circuit on stage five of the Tour of Taihu Lake 2016. The green jersey's the man to watch out for again. Jakub Marechko, winner of two stages so far, overall winner 12 months ago, but he knows he has competition now. Nicolas Marini has kept himself nice and hidden and protected throughout this 148 kilometer flat stage from Nantong. And he'd do well to show himself because we're approaching the final 10 kilometers. 25 seconds in the meantime for one sole leader, that's Murachan Halmuratov. He's a time trialist, 
So he's pretty well used to being out there. Nice and low down an aero. Traffic a bit too quick to get a good selfie with anyway. moment, Peloton pretty happy. Villa Southeast is the team charged with doing the majority of the chasing here. Taki Team Gusco have just taken their man out. It's about keeping the orange jersey protected here. And here come Nippo Vini Fantini. Winners 24 hours ago, and that would have settled the camp down very well. Professional continental team coming to a race where there's only five pro conti teams. Eight stages up for grabs. If you don't win one, I don't think you'd be very popular when you went back to the office. It's the last big race of the season for Nippo Vini Fantini. They have their first pre-season training camp for 2017 starting in around 10 days' time. They want to be able to turn up at the hotel in Italy with a job for 2016 well finished off. 22 seconds now for the breakaway. I'm going to see Novo Nordisk having that presence at the front. There's Dukla Braha in the black jerseys. The start Vax's team looking for Chris Mancia. He's the man on your screen on the left hand side, the big chili. And it's all smiles amongst the Villier boys, even chatting with the opposition there. You rarely see it this relaxed heading into the final 10Ks of a race. Hong Mei Ying, hoping to hold his top five general classification position. So he'll be keeping an eye on the orange jersey as they go in. Ten kilometers to go on stage five of the Tour of Taihu Lake 2016. 20 seconds for the sole leader, Murjan Halmuratov, attacked about 10 kilometers further back down the road. That's after the initial breakaway had come back together a little earlier than the sprinters' teams would like. And it is those sprinters' teams now who have to do the chasing, namely Vilja Southeast, the favorite team to take the win. Jakub Marechko, he's the man who won the opening two sprint stages. Mounted stage taken by the Australian Cameron Bailey. For once we got the sprints going again, Nicolas Marini was able to beat Marechko with Leo Duque coming third and adding another little twist to the general classification plot. He took four bonus seconds and if he can do the same today, he'll be creeping up on the general classification with two stages remaining. If you're looking for the Colombian, look for him in the blue and white jersey of Delco Marseille KTM. So no real fight for position yet. This is a strange approach for a sprint stage. A little slower than we would expect at this stage. Then you have to be careful because if the pace isn't increased here, you might get the odd opportunity to go out and attack. Anybody does get out very late, two or three riders together, that is when it would become dangerous. This man on his own isn't going to cause any danger. Gap down to 16 seconds now. Still the same two riders for Vilja Southeast. Trapari and Tedeschi. Those two have worked so hard all week. There's, uh, Yonder Godoy slipped down in the overall general classification. Giuseppe Fonzi now the highest ranked rider for Villa. And there's a race leader on the left hand side in the orange. Ten seconds. 
Peloton with all the major jerseys in. Orange, the leader, Cameron Bailey. Green is the one you're looking at for in the sprint from Villa Southeast. That's Jakob Marechko, the sprinter. Blue jersey, Lucas De Rossi, working for Leo Duque here towards the end. He's the best young rider. And the red jersey on the back of Wang Mei Yin. He's the best Chinese rider riding for Hangsheng. Amoratov from the Beijing XDS team. Get the feeling he hasn't got too long at the head of this race left. Mid cycling team third wheel. They've had a, a bit of a nightmare since they lost the lead. They lost their leader as well, Alexander Golovash, who had to climb off the race injured. I can tell you that he's been back at the finish line today watching on. Had a ride over on his bike to keep the legs ticking over. They do have Jain Sobal still there, Sjernhe Papok. And then all those also lost Stanislav Bashku on stage two. So down to just four riders, Minsk. So back into Hyman we head. This is the final time around the town itself. Before we go ever so slightly out of town and onto that straight road for the race finish and at the minute this is a job being very well done by Villia not too under pressure not having to ride out the skin here still a long way down in the peloton time to move up for a few teams as I'm not the Italian sprinter from Park Hotel Falkenberg there in the light green just moving up on the left hand side that's Marini 2 in the orange in the meantime for Villia they're way down the peloton with Jakob Marechko. Six point four kilometers to go. Blaha join the chase. That'll be a welcome development. Just needs an injection of something, this. Here come the Funvik team too in the orange jerseys. And the main orange jersey of the leader will be pretty happy with how this is going. Perhaps would like it a little more stronger and quicker just to make sure that everything's nice and safe. Duka Braho, as we said earlier in the week with Madan Kadlitz, actually took the overall general classification. I think it was the third edition of the race. They're a team that has ridden every single edition of the Tour of Taihu Lake. Come here every year and enjoy it. They've been part of the development of this now global product. 5.5 kilometers remain. St. George Merida team contributed to the breakaway today. They are very, very tight. No sprinter for them at this race. Morato's time out in front. How long does he have left? At the moment, it looks as though he'll be called at just the right, just the right time. Well, that's good. On the radio, ready to go. What can they produce? Funvik Soul Cycles. Just join the action with Vilia. Meantime, still desperately needing to move up is Jakob Marechko. Been down near the back for quite a while. A couple of their riders on the left hand side, pretty content to let another team do the chasing. And for Draperi and Tedeschi, they're the riders who've most ridden all week long. And there is Marechko, right in the center of the group. Towards the back half of the peloton, he does have riders to help him out. Fonzi on the left hand side, and his lead out man, Rafael Andreato, the Brazilian. Over four Ks to go. Another straight section of road. The next time he takes the right, that will be into the finish line. 
Still to be caught, Halmar Hatov. Vic Soul Cycles train trying to put something together. A sprinter waiting at the back. There's Dini's working at the front. Right with uh, number 11 on the back. A little bit of a fight for position now as we're approaching the final four kilometers. Still out there in front is Hal Muratov. Is there a moment where you start to believe? Well, probably not when you look back and see the chasing peloton approaching very quickly behind. Okay, and he's used to riding at the front. He's used to riding and hurting himself as a time trialist. Using every bit of the road that he can. But so is the peloton behind. A little bit more strong out now. Villiers are leaving it to other teams, though, to burn themselves out today. team riding on the front with 3.5 kilometers to go Park Hotel Falkenberg not far away green jersey of Marechko still in the center of the bunch but moving up we'll say 25th to 30th position right now Dukla Praha not far away and as if on cue, the Rietmu team are approaching the front too. Nippo Vini Fantini hiding, waiting, cards close to the chest. As for attacky team Gusto, it's all about getting the orange jersey into these final three kilometers into that neutralized zone. Whereas if there is any incident, any crash, any mechanical problem, we'll have the same time as the main group given. Almoratov not far away. Here comes another attack off the front. This could be dangerous now for a few of the sprint teams. Maybe accused of leaving it late. And it's Tabriz Petrochemical on the attack, being chased down now by the team from China, Hangsheng. Taki Team Gusto doing a really good job of keeping the orange jersey to the fore as the green jersey of Marechko advances for Marini. I think he's just trying to hang on the wheel of Marechko, wait and wait and come round him to try and take the victory again. 2.8 kilometers to go. Park Hotel Falkenberg just following their main man, Zanotti. And still Al Moratov hangs out with 2.7 kilometers to go. Tank from the Iranian team has been brought back. Here come Nipo. Nipo Vini Fantini then. Victors the day previously approaching the front and not wanting to mess this up whatsoever. So Marini in a very good position right now with 2.5 kilometers to go. Marechko has some positioning to do. Still blocked in, blocked out. And they're just making it up onto the wheel of Marini now. So they're the tactics for the day. Wait for Marini to go and follow him. 2.2 kilometers remain and Hal Moratov's day and a little adventure is about to be over. Who takes it up from here? Well, it's been Willia Vini, Fantini, both the teams from Italy. Willia and Nippo. And here comes Rietmu. Bogdanovic has been their main sprinter this week. Rietmu Delfin. Marish Bogdanovic. Wearing number 141, there is Marini who won 24 hours ago. That is Marechko in the green. All the main sprinters are present at the front. Zanotti not far behind. He's racing for Park Hotel Falkenberg, remember. Zhao Jingbiao there in the red as well. It's Wang Mei Ying doing quite a bit of work at the front as the best Chinese rider. Nippo stringing this out and Marechko getting himself now onto the wheel of his lead out man, Rafael Andreato. So just two left for Villiers Southeast. Nippo Vini Fantini fighting for position as we're approaching that final corner into the final kilometre now, and this is going to be a fast finish. Maric Bogdanovic has been put in the right place. Can he surprise the rest of the big sprinters and take a victory? Marini is there. He has his lead-out man to do his job. 
Final corners taken on, and here come Nipovini Fantini. And uh, well, Marechko's already a little boxed out. He's got work to do just to make the wheel. That could be key towards the final couple of hundred meters. This is a really good opportunity for Marini to take yet another win. Marini is there as Andreato moves up on the right hand side. Marini waits at the back to launch his sprint. Here he goes on the left. Marini is going. There goes Marechko as well through the center in the green. Marechko is there. Marini on the right hand side. Marechko is in the green. Marechko hitting the front, but it's Marini going. Marini through the middle, and this is going to be another win. This time it is another win for Nippo Vini Fantini. And Nippo Vini Fantini, I think this time with a different rider. I'm pretty sure that could be Edouard Grosso. We'll have to take another look. We didn't get a great angle going across the line. It looks as though it is Grosso the winner. And this is the victory. It is not Marini, in fact, who waits behind. And this is Grosso getting the victory. Victory for the Romanian Grosso. Marechko beaten again. Nippo Vini Fantini with a plan to beat them. So super stuff from the Romanian. Grosso there in the perfect lead out for Nippo Vini Fantini. They came with a team full of sprinters. Marini today decided to do the lead out. Grosso at the back, the 24 year old, taking just the fourth victory of his professional career. And my, did he enjoy it. So, Ilya Southeast messing that one up ever so slightly. Nippo Vini Fantini, that was a stage that was there for the taking. Flat wide roads, slow, slow day. And a peloton that at times looked as though it didn't even want to take the win. Nippo Vini Fantini getting four riders around the corner, positioned brilliantly. And if it was Marini 24 hours ago, today it will be Eduard Michael Grosso of Romania. So victory for Grosso, the Romanian, 24-year-old's fourth career win. Congratulations, what a fantastic sprint. Talk me through the last kilometer. Yeah, uh, it was so dangerous at the last uh, corner. My team uh, worked very good for uh, Marini, who was third, but uh, he, he did a sprint, uh, I think, at 200 meters. And at the last 50 meters, I go, so I win. It's my first victory after two years, I think. I was some problem, but now I, I hope all, all is good from now. And fantastic for the, for the team. Two wins in the last two sprints, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I think we win uh, all the stage from today to, to the last stage, we hope. And so for the rest of the team, you're just feeling good, but I mean, tomorrow it'll be back to Nikola and sort of see if he can win again. Yeah, yeah, we, we are for Nikola tomorrow and uh, the last one stage. I hope to be win again because I'm also in the general classification. So we try to do a hard stage. Maybe we change some things in the leading. Brilliant, fantastic. Go and join the rest of the team and Thank celebrate. You. Well done. So Grosso there explaining that it was for Marini today as we initially called. He came round in the final 50 metres to take the win. Hello, I am René Corella. Uh, I'm a writer for Starbucks' Partisan. Uh, and we're here at uh, Lake Tahoe uh, to win, try to win some races, right? <laughs> So, Edward Mikhail Grosso, the Romanian who hadn't won for a couple of years, picking up the fourth victory of his career. He previously won in Estonia at Qinghai Lake and the general classification at the Tour of Estonia as well. He'd been close in the Giro del Piemonte. He'd been close at the Romanian Cycling Tour as well. But a rider who'd had his injury problems, as he explained. Rode the Giro d'Italia this year, got through it, finished it. That will have helped the legs. And, well, top ten on the final stage here on a day where he did the work for his man Marini. He came around, had to go himself in the final 50 meters as Marini launched it early and ran out of gas. And that is the way they were able to beat Jakob Marechko yet again. So 
A very, very fresh team, Nipovini Fantini, getting a man in the break, worked for them. And Grosso was able to take the win. And no change to the overall general classification. And uh, Cameron Bailey will still lead. Three hours, 20 minutes of racing, ending with Grosso taking the win in the longest of these stages this week at the Tour of Taihu Wake. 24-year-old now in his third season as a professional with Nippo Vini Fantini. And that'll be a, a very nice victory to take into 2017 as he'll begin again. It's been a long year for Edward Grosso. Started out in January at the Tour of San Luis. Still racing right towards November. But he's finished 2016 with a victory. Hello, I'm Cameron Bailey and uh, from Attacky Team Gusto and uh, welcome to Tour of Taihu Lake 2016. Victory for Eduard Grosu of Romania ahead of Tumel of Germany and Marechko in third. Marini fourth, Lippens fifth with Popok there and Zanotti all in the top ten. Good news for the overall leader, Cameron Bailey, because Leo Duque wasn't amongst the bonus seconds. Neither was Giuseppe Fonsi. Bailey leading by 14 seconds at the moment. Marichko still leads the points classification. Marini second. And his lead of 11 points. Wang Mei Ying still the best Chinese rider. Chao down to fourth place there. And Lucas De Rossi, well, he's unchallenged, really. 31 seconds ahead of Machado. So he remains the best young rider, the Frenchman, in the blue jersey with two stages still to go. The news from stage five is that the lead remains unchanged. Cameron Bailey still in orange, the victor of the day. For the first time in two years, Edouard Grosso of Romania. Goodbye.
Saints, are you good to go for an interview? I can get. Uh, I might be able to get Jakob down here. Yeah, I can go live, I think, yeah. Jakob, not quite the result you wanted today and yesterday. So what's been happening in the last sort of sprint? So today we was uh, behind the Nippo, but uh, Andreato uh, start uh, when uh, we go up out of the curve. And uh, we was, uh, I was uh, behind and uh, I can uh, do a good uh, sprint. But the legs are still good. You're still very confident you can hold on to the green jersey and maybe win a sprint in the next couple of days yeah my object is the green jersey and uh, now i'm uh, i'm in a good uh, position and uh, i hope that uh, i take it uh, to the end of this tour and about the course today very very flat a few wins was it was it okay to control everything and look after everything yeah today the stage uh, was hard because uh, there's there was a breakaway in front and uh, my team uh, worked all day to to go to take it and uh, in the finish uh, kilometers, uh, uh, I have only I had only Andreato that uh, can help me. Good luck for tomorrow. I'm Thank sure you. you'll get there. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. So, Ola, a, a good team for Attack Gusto today. He seemed to have the plan perfect and the man out with the break. A great plan. Yeah, it really worked out well. You know, there's uh, there's a million possibilities in racing, and um, you know, uh, we wanted to put Ben in, in, in the break to take a little bit of responsibility off of us, and, and it worked out really, really well. And, um, yeah, all in all, it was a good day for us, very good day. We're a bit twitchy towards the end there. I mean, a few things going on, and you're not quite sure where people were in the sprints. Was it a little bit worrying towards the end? Uh, not too much. Uh, the thing that we worried about most was the crosswinds up at the top down here. Um, and it was crosswind there and then immediately into a tailwind coming into the finish. Um, and so with two laps to go, uh, Delco Marseille jammed it there. Um, so we were a little, we, we, uh, we kind of anticipated that and we were on it straight away. Um, and then after that, uh, one rider got away for a little bit, um, but the Italians were sitting there. We had one guy on the front as well and uh, it all came back at the end, and so uh, not too much worry. And then in, in the end, um, back on that section, we were you know, anticipating another move, um, but it, everyone was ready to, to sprint, and so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too hard there. Everyone was waiting for the sprint. And the next couple of stages are very similar to today. So does that make it easier for you to work out a plan and sort of have a game plan? You know, uh, the last stage looks pretty, looks pretty difficult. Um, there's two what look like fairly decent climbs. Um, and so we'd like to get, we'd like to hold the jersey uh, tomorrow, obviously, and, and the next day. But we're gonna take each day as it goes, and um, as we get, as we get towards that last day, we'll we'll we'll, we'll focus on that. So just stay at a time. Top man, Alan. Tommy, see you soon. Thanks Thank you. very much, Tommy. Yeah. So the words of Adam Martz there, reflecting a very good day for a tanky team Gusto, hung on to that orange jersey extremely well. Hoping to hold it until the end of the week. Right, selfie time for the winner. Edouard Grossu of Romania spent a lot of his time racing in Italy. Nippo Vini Fantini, his home, and he's brought them another victory today. First time in a couple of years he's managed to do that. Some bad interviews. Good Giro d'Italia this year, though, and uh, pretty unhappy, Jakob Malic, I think, on the left hand side. Unhappy with how his lead out man did the job today. Talking about Rafael Andreato and maybe following the wrong wheels. Maybe going too soon. Certainly didn't have enough once Grosso was able to come around and take the glory from him at the end. So we're just waiting for the podium. Chance to see all of the stars up there receiving their prizes for their efforts today.
So, sounds as though we might be able to go and hear from the Nippo Vini Fantini sports director. Here he is, Hitachi Fukushima. Another fantastic sprint, another fantastic result. Yes. How is the team feeling? How are you feeling? Ah, uh, it's great. You know, we want to stay two stage now, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, happy for him uh, with the stage. And uh, today is Nicola is uh, not super super performer, so he take it. So we have many sprinter. You know, we have four sprinter in the team, and uh, it's a little difficult to manage. But uh, yeah, we want to stay today. It's very happy. Yes. And the stage today was it? Uh, did it help that? You know that Southeast are going to sprint and that they're going to do some work. Yeah. Does it help you as a team manager to let your guys yeah. just sit back a bit? Uh, today we uh, we have uh, one rider in the escape, so we don't work today, and uh, so that's why we have enough rider to the sprint final. Yes, maybe we must work tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> See? <laughs> yes. And who will be the sprinters tomorrow? Have you decided yet? With four sprinters, uh, maybe I mean, another one. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we will see today tomorrow. Yes. And the next couple of stages, they're very, very similar. So the tactics will be the same for you. Yeah, for the yeah, we have uh, maybe same. Yeah, maybe same. Uh, but today we have two, two, two choices, you know. So yeah, we will see the final, you know. Yeah. Fantastic. Many Thank congratulations. You. Thank you very much. Yes. A very, very happy camp in there in uh, Nippovini Fanti and Fukushima, their sports director. The man with the shortest holiday in cycling, I think. He's off home for four days to Japan before the pre-season training camp in Italy takes place next week. It's nice that the sun is just making an appearance again here at the finish line. Just waiting for the organizers to uh, speed up a little with the presentation ceremony. It sounds as though that we're not too far away anyway. Of course, we'll have the orange jersey presentation too. That'll be for Cameron Bailey. Jakob Manichko, despite not winning today, remains in green. He actually extended his lead, finishing ahead of Nicola Marini. Lucas De Rossi, French rider, is in blue for the best young rider. And Wong Mei Yim, well, it looks as though, barring disaster, he has that red jersey sawn up. This is the sprint again, the final corner. Look at the positioning for Nippo Vini Fantini. Marini, well positioned and ready. First rider peeled off pretty well. Stacchiotti had done well. And Marechko had already had to move, make up quite a bit of positioning here himself at this particular period. This is when Marini went, really going for it, hitting his sprint hard. Marini still going, looking to try and take the win himself, couldn't manage it. But going around him, doing really, really well, was Eduard Grosso. Marechko just could not take off today. So Grosso taking the win. And arms up behind. Brilliant stuff from Nippo Vini Fantini. Tactically very, very well played. So, looks as though we are ready for podium time. The winner of the stage, Edward Gusson from Vini Fantini. And Nippo Vini Fantini do get their stage win yet again. Two from two now. Their rivals from Italy, Villia, taking their own couple of stages. It looked as though they would dominate at the start of the week. And Edward Grosso, it's been a while since he's been up on the top of a podium. He turned 24 in September, still just about in the young rider category. Went number four of his career, followed victories two years ago in Estonia, Qinghai Lake and the GC at that same race in Estonia. It's a long year of racing. 
21 days. He's ridden 13,000 kilometers as uh, Eduard Grosso, and that's just in racing, never mind the training. All the way from mid January to mid November. That sort of season would have been unthinkable a few years ago in professional cycling and probably still not advisable. But it's worked for him at the end of the year. And Grosso back sprinting for the victory. And here's the man who's leading the general classification, Cameron Bailey. Twenty-six years of age. Another orange jersey for him. It will be day number three in the lead of a stage race for the first time in his career. Getting plenty of these sponsors' helmets to take home. He'll find a way to put it on in the end. Let's welcome our guest, Mr. Kuo Cameron. Thank you very much, Mr. Kuo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh. If he's on the podium in two days' time, he'll have won his first stage race as a pro. Well, he got there in the end, didn't he? So on from Cameron Bailey. Oh, and Jakob Maretsko. Well, these days are an hour longer than everybody else is on at the moment. Every day to the podium. It was the same last year, although a little more busy in the presentation. He was taking every single jersey on offer. This time it's the points jersey. It's something he still has to fight for with Marini just 11 points behind. And there'll be uh, quite a bit of disappointment today, I think, for Jakub Marečko. So congratulations indeed to Jakob Marečko, another day in green. And time to see Lucas De Rossi again. French rider, young French rider from uh, Delco Marseille Provence. Come from mountain biking. And they've been on the road for a couple of years. And it's time to change his blue and white jersey for a fully blue one of the young rider classification. He has a 31 second lead in that.
请颁奖嘉宾有获奖运动员和有留念。Let's welcome our guests. Well, time for the family photograph with all the sponsors and local VIPs and dignitaries as well. And a picture you've enjoyed. One more jersey to award. And that is that uh, the best Chinese rider. A rider from the Greater China region. And Wang Meiying from uh, Hangzhou cycling team. Let's welcome Mr. Yuan Feng and Mr. Zheng Xu Dong to award the leader of the best Chinese rider classification, red jersey. So he'll swap the red and white for the fully red jersey. But again, it'd be a big surprise if Wang Mei Ying couldn't hold this jersey to the end now. Two more stages to survive. That's a very healthy lead of over a minute. Nice going away present for his current team when he leaves to join the World Tour in Bahrain Merida. Brand new setup from the Arabian Gulf. And he's off to get his recovery done. He spent enough time on that podium this week. Wang Mei Ying again in the red jersey. So one more moment ago, and it's the champagne moment. Well, the most aggressive rider of the day to be awarded as well. That goes to Darcy Ellen Norton. Let's welcome Mr. Fan Honglei and Mr. Huang Kai to award the most aggressive rider. Fresh and Darcy Ellen Norton is given the most aggressive rider. So Darcy Ellen Norton for his efforts in the breakaway is rewarded. Good work from the young Kiwi, the biggest race of his career so far. Oh, well, there's one more picture to take. <laughs> podium girls want their picture as well. And it finally sounds as though we're ready for that champagne moment at the end of the day. All today's winners can celebrate. There you go, they've had the call. Back comes Jakob Marecko. Everybody wrapped up, it's freezing out there. Days winner right at the centre. Eduard Grosso. And a champagne moment too for each and every rider on the podium. So a big day then for Nippo Vini Fantini. They double up on their victory from 24 hours ago. Grosso this time the victor and Cameron Bailey. Safe in orange, two days to hang on.
Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, the Chinese interview is buggered off. So